Hi, welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 102. My name is Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I sell my hand spun yarns at an Etsy shop called the Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, and we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Hello, how are you? It is Monday, September 5th, and it is a holiday in the US, so I actually preempted recording by Wednesday so that I would have a little bit more to show you. Um, it has been a wonderful holiday weekend. I have not gotten in quite as much crafting time as I have wanted, but we have been out and about. The weather is quite lovely. Um, last night we went to um, kind of a nerdy show in a theater and I had a wonderful time. And so uh, today I'm using it the day to kind of catch up on everything. Um, and I'm desperately craving a nap. I'm hoping maybe I can squeeze one of those in as well. <laughs> So um, I have lots to talk about today. I have some knitting, some spinning, and I actually have two product reviews. Usually I only do one per episode, um, but I decided that um, I sort of double booked myself, so I thought I would just go ahead and do two today. So let's get the show on the road. Today's tea is one of my fall favorites. It is not quite time for... Um, fall yet. It is not technically fall yet, um, but I am wishing and hoping we are going to have a, um, a slightly elevated temperature this week. It's going to be up in the 90s, so it is definitely not fall weather yet, but I am hoping. Um, I am drinking my Sweet Harvest Pumpkin Tea. It is black tea from Celestial Seasonings. I love this one in the fall, and um, I am using my Jenny the Potter in the Mug Jenny the Potter mug again. I should have probably put it in my Halloween mug, but it is slightly early for that. Um, so this was uh, the mug that I got in her recent update, uh, Dahlias and Sunflowers in yellow and scummy greens. Um, I had washed it and it was still sitting on my kitchen counter making me happy, and so I put tea in it today. So yes, Sweet Harvest Pumpkin. Just a little taste of fall. I can't wait. I love fall. I think fall might be my favorite season and it makes me want to knit all the things and um, just a great season. So let's get into the knits. I absolutely positively did not expect to have a finished object this week, um, but things went a little nutty after the last podcast, which I will explain, um, but I did end up finishing my Tonk Socks. They are almost exactly identical except for the toe where I think I started this one a row or two ahead of where I started this one so I didn't quite get the little pink spot at the toe um, but otherwise they match almost perfectly. This is um, my standard vanilla sock recipe. I did these on um, a zero, which I think is a two millimeter needle. Um, I did uh, ribbing for about a two by two rib for about 12 rows, um, leg, heel gusset with a slip stitch heel flap, um, and then just a regular foot. That's kind of my vanilla sock pattern these days. Um, I did actually work them from top down and sometimes I work them from toe up. So um, I guess that's a little different, but these are done and ready to go in the drawer to be worn. This is the Harry Potter opal yarn um, in the Tonks colorway. I am hoping that I have enough to do a pair of socks for my mini me. I need to um, weigh the socks tonight and weigh what I have left and um, divide it into two balls. Hers probably won't match, but I'm not sure if they absolutely have to. Um, but as it turned out, when I finished this one, I, or sorry, when I finished this one, I was only um, like one or two sections from the re from starting the repeat again. So I decided to make them match. So yes, those are my talk socks. Woohoo, done. I worked on those quite a bit because my Rhinebeck sweater did not go exactly as planned. Last week I showed you the pattern that I wanted to knit and that was Dallas um, by Amy Miller. And I went ahead and swatched for it and I did a swatch of the full cable repeat. And as I got into reading about the sweater, I realized um, that there were some things about the sweater that I didn't love um, and I started to feel not super excited to knit it. So I finished my swatch and I blocked it and the next day a friend was asking me what I thought and she could tell I was decidedly ho-hum about it and she said, you know, if you're not excited about this sweater, you don't have very long to knit it. You're not going to want to knit it um, and are you even going to want to wear it? So smart. So very smart. 
So I went through my queue and looked for things that, that I might want to knit. This was, let's see, I swatched on Sunday and Monday. So this was Tuesday. And um, I thought about it and I went through my queue more and I picked another um, pattern that had been in my queue for a while and it is still lovely and cabled. Um, it is called Ardara and it is by Carol Feller and it is um, a short sleeved, I almost think of it as like a hiker's waistcoat and it's got a beautiful all over um, cable pattern and um, it's a little bit less yardage than the last one and it minimizes some of the issues that I was having with the last one. I don't think the last one is a badly written pattern at all. Um, it called for a level of ease that I wasn't sure that I was comfortable with. Um, the yarn that it called for had more drape than my yarn did, so I was a little concerned that, um, the sweater was going to be a little, um, stiffer on me. And, um, the other thing that it had was some pretty large swaths of reverse stockinette, which I don't enjoy knitting and I didn't really enjoy the look of. So those were the reasons that I skipped the last one. Um, I moved on to something that was somewhat similar. There is still quite a bit of reverse stockinette. There often is um, when you're talking cabled sweaters. Um, but I liked some of the other elements better and I think the yarn is more suited to it. So on Tuesday night I did a second swatch and got it ready to dry and this is the swatch. These are the all over cables. It's um, it's kind of a more complicated cable in the middle and then just kind of these chain disc cables on either side. And I went ahead and added a little bit of ribbing and a little bit of stockinette so that I could, um, it gave me uh, gauge measurements for all three sections. So I went ahead and made sure all three were in my swatch and I was very, very pleased with the swatch. Um, and how it turned out. Unfortunately, it was not dry enough before my Wednesday night knit night, um, which I had anticipated starting the sweater at. Um, so that was how you got the Tonk socks, because frankly, I had a lot of time to work on them this week while I was waiting for my swatches to dry and trying to figure things out. So I did not cast on for my Runbeck sweater till Thursday, which if you're keeping track, I'm getting pretty down to the wire. Um, a friend of mine had a countdown at knit night this week and it was like 44 days, 43 days to Rhinebeck. So I am cutting it really close. And actually Liz, um, Liz Farley Metzger, uh, commented on, uh, Instagram, you know, it's about time you cast on that sweater. So yes, I cast on the sweater and I actually got a good amount of work done this weekend. Um, not only did I cast it on on Thursday and Friday and work on it on my own, on Saturday we had a knitting meetup um, and so I worked on it there and I am pretty far in. Um, or at least decently far in for um, only four four or five days of work. Um, the cardigan is knit uh, back and forth from the bottom up. So I have um, the bottom up. These are the panels, sorry, on the back. Let me see if I can make this make a little more sense. This is the back. And then I also have both fronts on there. Um, the uh, Towards the sides, there is um, a middle section that, like I said, is all reverse stockinette. And this is where the shaping will occur. Um, so I am getting to the point where I'm almost to the shaping. In fact, I need to measure it again. Um, I knit my ribbing for my prescribed length and now I'm working on the cabling. Um, remember this is going to be kind of a long waist coast. So this um, whole part will be down kind of below the hip. Um, I think I am um, getting around to right around where the hip is and then sort of the shaping up into the waist. Um, and I have, um, I've done about maybe just a smidge more than half the cable repeat. As you can see, um, I'm not there yet. So, but I'm almost to the top of this one. So um, that is what I have been working on. I am pleased with my progress. Um, I'm happy with the yarn. There is um, just over a skein of yarn in this and I think it's gonna take six or seven skeins. So I feel like I am making decent progress and I definitely need to do a skein or a skein and a half per week. Um, but that should be good. So I need to wind a couple more skeins. I have um, the skein that's attached right now and I don't have a ton of this left. This was actually the one that I used to do the swatches with. So it was probably only half to a third of a skein when I picked it up. Um, and so I'll put that on the sweater and I need to wind a couple more. Um, I already have one more ball wound. So I should be good for this week, but I'll wind a little bit more. 
Um, and I'm hoping to get quite a bit done. I'm hoping that it will kind of fly off the needles and of course I don't have to do sleeves. So even though this will be really long um, and then have like a few extra tidbits, um, it's got uh, a belt and some loops and um, it's got a really um, nice collar treatment, um, but I shouldn't have to do too much um, because I, it's just gonna be, I won't have sleeves afterwards. So, um, and I think that's where I'm saving the yardage. Um, so yeah, so I'm super excited about it. I'm, I'm making good progress and I need to keep working. Um, if I'm lucky, I'll finish by the end of September. I don't know if I'll be that lucky. Um, although we do have stuff coming up in the next several weekends where I can sit and knit. Um, Wes has got some drone races. There's some other things coming up. Um, so hopefully I will get lots and lots of knitting time in. So that is my Rhinebeck sweater called Ardara by Carol Feller. And again, it's Cascade 220 in the colorway Irlande, and it's not showing up quite as well as it could. And um, it's a very heathered colorway with lots of yellow flecks and um, some darker green flecks. So I'm super happy with it. Um, I did take a picture for Instagram and put it on my project page, and that is very close to the real color. So that's that. Um, one more very, very small whip. Since I finished my Tonk Sucks um, and we went to the movies last night and I'm crazy, so I like to knit in the movies, I needed a project that was going to be simple because I can't cable in the movies. That's that's silly. Um, so I pulled out my Halloween socks. I decided it was time to start. I have this cute little Halloween bag. Um, I love this fabric. It just, it makes me laugh so much. Um, I got this from Kicks and Giggles Studio. That's Kim. Uh, Kicks and Giggles is on Etsy and I love the little witch in this and I... I always love using my Halloween bag. And yes, I know it's not Halloween yet, but I'm working on Halloween socks, so they'll be ready for Halloween and they're in a Halloween project bag. So you'll have to deal with it. And drinking my fall tea, of course. Um, the yarn that I am using is this beautiful yarn. Um, I bought this last year, I think, if not the year before. This is, um, I think I have the tag in here. Yeah, I do. It is Post Yarn, which is from Simply Socks Company. Um, Simply Socks Yarn Company. Um, it is a striping sock, 75% Superwash Corydale, 25% Nylon in the colorway Ghost Town. And I just really loved the colors. Um, I grabbed, I had some um, Knit Pick Stroll in, uh, that's just the fingering white plain, um, in black because I wanted to do um, coordinating heels and cuffs and because I also thought that if I have enough when this is over, I might make Roxy her own pair of Halloween socks. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed those, although I'm not sure because I'm not sure that the Corydale is, um, no, it is super wash. So I could do that. Nice. Okay. So I, um, cast on for the, uh, cuff and the ribbing and did that before we went to the movies. And then in the movie theater over about two hours, I knit, um, and the colors are coming across pretty clear in here. It's a red, um, a bright orange, a lighter orange, yellow, um, a turquoise blue, a black, and then there's a purple right next to the black, which is kind of a little bit hard to see. It's easier to see in real life. Um, but it is kind of a little bit rainbowy and a little bit, um, I like them. I'm calling these, um, won't you come with me to spooky town socks, a little funky town there. Um, and I am enjoying these. These will not get a lot of love right now. Um, they will hopefully get love, um, in the in-between times when I can't work on the sweater, like the movies, um, or they will come with me to Rhinebeck and be one of my plain projects. I hope to finish them in time for Halloween, of course. Um, and I am trying the Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson, which is um, for the most part, a it's a top-down sock with an afterthought heel. Um, of course, there's more to it than that. I did buy the pattern um, and I have never actually officially done an afterthought heel. So I am looking forward to using her pattern, but right now I'm pretty much in the standard sock knit round and round and round and round. So that is um, the one thing that I did cast on this week and got a little bit of effort into. And um, I'm looking forward to knitting these. I really like this yarn. Um, it's a little bit rustic. I mean, it's not as soft as some of the other um, yarns, but I love, um, I have really liked spinning Corydale for socks. So I was pretty sure that I would like um, Corydale for these socks. And I think they're gonna wear really, really well. I think they're gonna wear like iron. So um, yes, so that's what I'm working on. And like I said, if I have enough left over, I will maybe do a little bit for Roxy. Ooh, that's kind of cool looking at the top, the way it, the way it winds up. Um, but yes, so 
probably won't see these too much, but they're around, like I said, for when I have a moment for a few rows and not enough to um, work on my sweater. Okay, that's it for knitting. Knitting is going to be a little boring for a while. It's going to be my sweater and maybe those socks. Sorry, that's what you get while I'm preparing for Rhinebeck. Spinning is a little bit interesting though. Last time I showed you um, a braid of Huckleberry Knits um, and it was Targi Silk in the colorway Black Sand Beach. And I actually recorded last time before going to a spinning Sunday. So um, I got lots done and um, actually finished this skein earlier this week, which is earlier than I usually um, finish things. But this is, um, it was, um, reds and oranges and pinks and purples into like a very very dark almost blacky purple um and the colors are really blowing out on this monitor um what i did is i um opened the braid and it looked like it had been dyed symmetrically in fact when she braided it together um she had this really long really really thinny thinny really really thin skinny um length of fiber and what she had done was she had folded it in half and then she had um braided it up that way and so there were basically like two halves that were exactly identical um and what i did was i spun this through end to end i didn't break it up at all and then i plied it end to end so i have lots of places where the colors kind of overlap and you get a little bit of barber pulling and then i have lots of sections where the colors meet up so you get um like right in here you get a lot of the plain purple and the plain pink um, and I used yellow to tie it together which probably wasn't the smartest because that's kind of almost what it looks like in there um, so it is a really pretty skein it should subtly stripe like I said the colors didn't meet up exactly um, but there are lots of sections where they do um, and this is super pretty like I said Targi silk it is puffy and squishy and soft um, and the silk will give it some durability and um, it doesn't add as much shine as I thought it might um, but it is just a great skein it is going to go up in the shop this evening I will try and take some photographs that better show the color because my monitor is just like oh my god too much color blowing out so that one is done the next one on the wheel is actually a braid of fiber I showed you last week um the winner of the hundredth episode giveaway um it was a braid of Polworth in the colorway mom's favorite from hello yarn and it had purples and mauves and um some browns in there and then just a little bit of silvery um gray and a little bit of tan and um this is one half of the ball um I ended up actually starting and finishing a half so this is the first half on the bobbin um and I don't think the colors are showing up as well um on here it's just got all these like plums and chocolates and kind of a silvery gray and a whole bunch of different kinds of pinks and peaches and it is just absolutely gorgeous I'm trying to get it to it's just not going to do it. Um, I will take some pictures for my Instagram this afternoon, which again will probably be better on the color. And then I'm going to try and finish this one up in the next couple days. Um, my next spin I didn't bring to show you because I am going to try and spin another um, couple bumps of the uh, Corydale Cross for my shawl. Um, and then I have a custom spin coming up, which um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet because we're still in negotiations over that. So um, that will be the next spin and it will probably be two bumps um so I will bring that and show you next week so that's what I'm working on okay we are 18 minutes in let's move on to the reviews I was super lucky to receive a couple different things and I have some notes that I'm actually going to use this time um, the first thing that I received was a lovely box, um, Compliments of Stitchcraft Marketing and KPC Yarns, which is, um, Knit Pearl Crochet. And they sent me this lovely box, see, um, KPC Hand Knit Yarns, and they are at kpcyarns.com. They are a company out of Hong Kong. And um, they put together these boxes and they have other interesting um, boxed sets of different kinds of yarns, um, but it is absolutely beautiful. Let me just pull this out. Um, it came with a couple different things. It came with this lovely postcard that shows um, their yarn in all different shades. Um, and then it came with um, this lovely um, brochure. 
again with all the different colors and it talks about their different yarns um kpc is a family-owned company that has been around for a while um they started back in i believe it was the 50s after a trip to after some some in the family made a trip to shanghai and um they work with a um with a farm in new south wales um and uh they work with the sheep on the farm and use that wool um and so they have all kinds of different um all they have um four different kinds of yarn and then in a variety of different weights um so they talk about their novo merino which is an ultra fine merino wool and that is incredibly smooth and gentle against the skin it comes from gostwick australia where they have producing wool since 1834. Um, it's available in over 60 colors and four weights um, and the deal is that each of their wools is available in kind of some standard weights um, they have a four ply a dk an aran weight and a chunky weight um, and the colors are similar over the um, different weights of yarn. So for instance, if you see the yarn and you like a certain colorway, you can find it in any of the weights of the yarn that are given. And I thought that was kind of cool. So for instance, they show the Novo Merino and then they show you, um, it's available in 60 colors over the four weights and they show you the four weights and they give you sort of the gauge on that. Um, and actually, if you look at the website, it will also give you um, the exact um, weight of the yarn ball and how much yardage is in it. Um, the second yarn that they do is called Gossip, G-O-S-S-Y-P. It's spun from 100% organic cotton, certified by the Global Organic Textile Standard. Gossip also meets ecological guidelines for dyes and the dyeing processes ensure the yarn is as environmentally friendly as possible. It is also available in 60 colors and three weights. It comes in the four ply, the DK, and the chunky. So you get that there. And then the other two kinds of yarn are the Glen Cool, um, which is spelled G-L-E-N-C-O-U-L. Um, KPC Glen Cool Wool Cotton is a blend of 70% merino and 30% cotton. It has the feel and subtle sheen of a cotton yarn with the stretch and durability of wool. Um, it's available in the four ply, the DK, and the chunky. And then the last one is Kashmir. KPC Kashmir originates in the mountainous plateaus of Mongolia, where tribesmen still herd hundreds of Kashmir goats. So it is available in 40 colors and three weights. It comes in lace, four ply, and DK. So that is the beautiful brochure. Now I want to show you the box because this is really cool. So the box is a mini um, sample kit of a bunch of the different yarns. Isn't that pretty? Oop, they're falling out. Um, it came with a whole bunch of samples. Um, which are, um, they're just knit, um, they're all like garter stitch sections, and all the little tags that come with the yarns um, say what the yarn is, what the gauge is, it's got the cleaning information. So for instance, this is Gossip, 100% organic DK cotton. It says it's a 50 gram, 113 meters, 123 yards. Um, and it's got all the information on the inside. Um, and so it came with a couple handfuls of these. And so they swatch the chunky, they swatch, um, this is the Novo Merino four ply. This is the Gossip four ply. Um, the Glen Cool DK. So it's got all these cute swatches in here, um, all with these little tags. And then, like I said, it's also got um, the, the little um, balls of yarn. All of their balls of yarn come with this little ribbon and tag, and they suggest that you can take the tag off and you can use it as like a gift tag on whatever you your finished project is. So when you're done, you can use the ribbon and the tag, which will also give them the care instructions. So for instance, this is Novo Merino DK, 100% ultra fine merino wool, smoothie, which is the colorway 10G, I guess. Um, it's, well, maybe it's just 10 grams. So smoothie, um, and it's 21 meters, 23 yards. So it just tells me. Now I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all of these different ones. Um, a lot of them are from the same weights. Um, so I thought I could um, knit them into a hat or I may just um, like knit them into a charity hat, just do a stripey hat. Um, or I may just knit them up into these samples just so that I have these here because isn't this a great way to send out samples um, so you can, when you're ordering, you know exactly what you're ordering and what it will knit up like and what it will feel like. So this is a super cute box. And then the other thing that I thought was very interesting 
was they also included a little um, USB drive with their little logo. Um, I was unable to find this particular box on their site. I don't know if this is something that they just did promotionally. Um, and all the prices are in Hong Kong dollars. So I don't think that these are unreasonable, but I didn't actually do the translation. Um, I wanted to stay, thank Stitchcraft Marketing and um, KPC Yarns for sending me this beautiful, beautifully put together box. And I have to say, really, um, when you're doing samples, packaging counts. This is just gorgeous. Um, I believe these were kind of their yarn tasting boxes. Um, although I noticed that they had other boxed sets. Um, there was a boxed set for their Christmas colors, I think. Um, and um, then they also just put in a little one of their business cards. All these tags are the same. They're on um, high quality cardboard. Um, and then it's just got, um, that is where you can find it. So knitpearlcrochet.com or kpcyarn.com. So thank you to Stitchcraft Marketing and KPC Yarns because that was super fun to get and I know that I will enjoy playing with this. Um, I will also do a little write-up of this on the blog this week with some photos so you can stay tuned for that. That is review number one. And I actually received that a couple weeks ago and probably should have reviewed it on last week's podcast. And for some reason, it totally slipped my mind. So it got reviewed on this week's podcast. So let's go to the second one. I'm super excited about this one, too. Um, you remember, you may remember that earlier this year, I hosted a um, co-knit along with Anne Podlesack of the Wooly Wonka Fibers podcast, also of um, Wooly Wonka Fibers. She is a dyer of fiber and yarn. She is also a pattern writer, and she has had a whole whack of published patterns lately. Um, and she also, I think it was earlier this year, she published a book, a whole book of Southwestern patterns. Um, but she has had patterns in, she had patterns in the most recent Knit Picks catalog. Um, she had a beautiful um, stranded, uh, it was a long sweater, um, and you could make it in a whole bunch of different colorways, but it was like all kinds of Fair Isle. Um, she also just had a pattern in the most recent issue of Interweave Knits, um, which was a yoked um, pullover. I think it was a men's pattern. I don't know if there was a corresponding women's pattern. I know in this issue they did a lot of um, men and women's, um, but I can't remember. But so she designs and is everywhere. Um, and she uh, announced several, um, well, I don't know if it was actually several months ago. I know it was at least several weeks ago. She announced that she was working on a new collaboration um, with a partner of hers, um, a knitting uh, uh, a colleague and a friend. And they were going to call it Knit Filament. And um, you can find uh, all of what I'm about to talk about at Knit Filament, K-N-I-T-F-I-L-A-M-E-N-T dot com. Um, and they announced that they were going to be, um, they were going to be publishing their first issue. Um, it is kind of a, I guess I would call it not quite a magazine. It's a knitting pattern book. Um, and, uh, I don't know exactly how often they're going to publish. I can't remember whether it is, um, twice a year or quarterly. I guess it's probably quarterly because, um, this one is the fall 2016 version. Um, but it might just be twice a year. Um, anyway, she, um, emailed me and asked if she could send me a copy to review on the podcast. And of course I said yes. So let me talk about this. I received It Is Knit Filament issue number one, fall 2016. Um, the contributors to this are, like I said, Anne Podlesack and her partner, who is Kathleen, and I think it's Dames, D-A-M-E-S, although I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. This is a beautiful pattern book, um, and it includes eight patterns, which include four sweaters, two are cardigans, and two are pullovers. It includes a pattern for matching hat and gloves, one pair of socks, one shawl, and then one cowl and fingerless mitts. Um, they're all ladies patterns, this version, um, but it has a wide variety of patterns um, that look really nice. Um, and this is an eight and a half by 11. It is 32 pages. Um, print copies are $21 plus shipping, and you can find them at knitfilament.com. Um, there is also, um, you can download the issue as a um, Ravelry uh, download. Um, and that is also $21. And I believe if you order, yes, if you order the um, print copy, there's a little code inside the back cover, um, which will enable you to download a copy into your Ravelry library as well. 
Um, also, if you are not ready to go whole hog for the magazine, you will save some by um, getting all the patterns, eight patterns for $21. Um, but the patterns are individually priced as well. Um, I think the socks and um, mitts are closer to $5 and the sweaters are closer to 7 So if there's like just one pattern that you see in this, you can easily um, purchase them. Uh, so let's talk about this. Um, it is a really nice volume in the sense that it is printed on nice quality paper. Um, the cover is um, slightly uh, slightly heavier cardstock and the inside is printed on really nice paper. It is um, printed in color. The patterns themselves um, are laid out including um, charts in lots of color and uh, lots of ease. I don't want to give too much away um, going through here. And I have to say that I really like the styling of this episode. It's um, a little bit, or this issue, it is a little bit vintagey, which is not 100% my style, but I still found um, several things that I would like to knit. I um, actually, I think my favorite pattern in the book is the cover sweater because you know me and cables. It is a beautiful cabled sweater with a really nice um, neckline and this pattern is by Kathleen. So that is the first sweater and it is called Beaten. Um, it says it is a bottom-up seamless pullover with cables and shawl collar worked in Harris Highland. Um, and so it's all of them have these great little um, sorry pointing sketches. Um, these great little pointing sketch uh, these great little pointing sketches these great little sketches of sort of the schematics and how the pattern looks and actually one of the look um the original lookbook had all these little sketches in them and I just think they're really really charming um the second pattern is bittersweet which is a bottom-up seamless cardigan with twisted stitch yoke worked in Wooly Wonka um Suridwin sock I'm totally gonna butcher that but it is a beautiful nice orange and like I said it's got a yoke detail and again it's just got the little um cardigan up there. Um, next up are um, hat and gloves and I don't want to show you this picture I want to show you the picture that I just love with the styling. Um, Claudette is a top-down cardigan with berry lace details. It is worked in Harrisville Shetland and that one is here. It is worked in this beautiful beautiful purple um, and I really really like that one. Um, this is the shawl. It is called Copperfield, a top-down triangle shawl with double moss and wheat sheaves worked in Brooklyn Tweed Loft. So, and that is just in an orange. These are, these just look like such great fall patterns um, and in such rich colors. Um, this one is uh, Lombard, which um, is actually my second favorite sweater in the collection. Um, it is a bottom-up seamless pullover with chevron detail worked in Harrisville Flywheel. Um, and it's really kind of hard to see on the picture here, um, all the details, but the little sketch shows you it's got that really nice lace detailing down the front and um, down each of the sleeves and it's got that really nice v-neck. Um, and this is the photo that there are a few more from this series where they styled the hat and the gloves with the sweater and I just absolutely love the way they have done that. Um, the other pattern that I really, really would like to knit, these are the Milkweed Socks, and those are by Anne. Um, and that says, cuff down socks with a flap heel, wide toe, and Milkweed Lace worked in Woolen Rabbit, um, Pearl Sock. And I really just like that pattern, and I have some, um, Tweety yarn that I would really, really like to knit into some socks, and I think that might be perfect for, um, that one, because it looks like, um, the yarn may not be tweedy, but it looks like a semi-solid, and I think I could get away, get away with it. Um, and then this one is really, really cool. Um, it's called Rumble Seat, a seamless double cowl and mitts with cluster stitch worked in Malabrigo Rios. And I just really like the stitch pattern on that. They almost look um, like honeycombs or something. It is a cluster stitch, and I don't know exactly how that's worked. Of course, I could look in the pattern index to f in the directions to find out, but it's just really beautiful. So like I said, these are um, real clear instructions. They've got other pictures um, in where the patterns are. They've got kind of um, zooming in on the yokes of the sweaters. Um, lots of nice detail in there. Um, these, This is the Bonnie, the beret and um, gloves that I was talking about earlier. Um, I guess maybe the photo that I saw of them that I loved so much is um, a little different. This is Claudette. Um, it shows the lace pattern on the back of the cardigan, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, 
And yeah, so it just goes through the rest of the patterns. Here's a little bit more detail on that sweater that I was showing you. Lombard, you can see um, a little bit more lace detail on it. It's just a hard color when it photographs. And yeah, um, they've got um, at the back, they've got um, an abbreviation and stitches and all the patterns. I'm not holding it close up because the code is right. Well, I guess I can do that. That's the code for the download. It'll be right in there inside the back cover. Um, it's just a little bit of a lookbook. And then, um, then it's just got um, sort of the back. So like I said, it's not a magazine because it's not, it doesn't have advertising um, and it's not printed like that. It is more of a pattern volume. Um, and I look forward to many, many more of these. Um, like I said, the vintage styling of this issue is not 100% my style, um, but there is someone in my knit group who is absolutely going to love this, love this, love this, love this, and I am going to take it to knit group and pass it around um, because I can just picture her knitting um, quite a few things out of this. So thank you to Anne and Kathleen. I know Anne was the one I had contact with, but thank you to Anne and Kathleen for sending me a copy of this. And um, I will put links on my uh, show notes page to where you can find all of these, or you can just look up Knit Filament on Ravelry. All the patterns are there um, and they look absolutely beautiful. And I would encourage you to check this volume of patterns out. So, a little bit of a long one but thank you for sticking with me today um my one final note is that i had one prize winner that i have not heard from in the hundredth episode that is hey jen ray um you won the chatelaine from winemaker sister um if you are watching please contact me um i will give you till the end of the month to contact me and then if i don't hear from you i will have to draw someone else for the prize so please send me an email or a pm or something and um i will get that out to you so that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed everything. I hope you have had a wonderful weekend if you were in the US. I hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend. It is our last long weekend um, until the holidays, which I know are gonna be here before we know it. Um, I feel like this year has just flown by and now I'm thinking, oh, we're not gonna be off again until Thanksgiving and Christmas and oh my goodness it can't possibly be time for that again. Um, also because as you know in November I host Nanny Swaymo in the, or I'm a moderator in the Nanny Swaymo group so I'm starting to think about once I finish my Rhinebeck sweater and go to Rhinebeck and come back what am I going to knit for Nanny Swaymo? Yeah okay I'm a little crazy. That's me. So, uh, thank you for joining me for this episode. If this was your first one, it was kind of an interesting one to join for, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll say as I always do until I see you next time. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>